Hey, this is Matthew with RetroEdge.Tech and coming back at you talking about the HP Stream Laptop. I did a previous video in which I talked about how it's a pretty terrible laptop, and it is. And uh, I'm going to be going over some more reasons why it's uh, terrible today as well. But also wanted to share some success. Um, I have a small blog post here uh, just talking about how I did load Linux onto the HP stream. I first tried to install Linux Mint Debian Edition because I like that. I like Linux Mint, but and I've been using the Debian Edition for a lot of stuff lately. So I tried that first, but the installer just kind of choked and didn't see the eMMC storage, which is one of the problems with the laptop in the first place is that it's only got the 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, which is significantly slower than, say, a Samsung Pro SSD. Um, and in some cases, it seems slower than a hard drive, though I haven't tested um, between them. I, I'm holding the laptop here. I've, I've got I've got Ubuntu uh, 2004 beta installed at the time that I'm recording this video. is just a little bit before um, Ubuntu is 2004 is set to release. Um, and I was successful with installing Ubuntu. The installer worked fine. Uh, just to note that upon restart, I had to manually, you know, after I did the installation and you restarted, I had to manually restart the network manager service in order to get the Wi-Fi working again. Um, and then I was able to do updates and it has continued to work fine, albeit pretty slow. Um, the, the laptop is still slow, but it's usable. And GNOME 3, of course, is quite a bit larger. Uh, in memory usage and pro background process tasks and that sort of thing. So I will probably try to put a tiling window manager on it, like BSBWM, maybe try something else as well. Um, I saw DistroTube did some, a video review of the Spectrum uh, tiling window manager. That looks interesting. I haven't touched it at all yet, but hey, it looks interesting. Maybe it'd be fun to play with around on this. Actually, it'd probably be more fun to play around with on uh, better hardware. And uh, the thing, of course, with RetroEdge, this, this HP Stream is a fairly new laptop. You can buy them brand new right now. But 10-year-old um, laptops are going to be a lot better than this laptop. So that's something that to kind of take notice of, a retro stuff, good hardware that is meant to be upgraded can be much better used, older, even 10 years old or more older than something that you would buy new that's essentially designed to not be very good. And the HP Stream laptops are designed to not be very good. Um, so uh, let's go through some of the reasons why that is. Um, I probably can't see great, but this is the back of the laptop. There's, there's no exposed screws. Um, so that means that you can't easily just unscrew a few things and get access to the internal uh, motherboard. Um, so I had it torn this apart just because you have to take off some adhesive and get access to the screws and pry things open. It's very different than just opening panels or having uh, for to compare this with another HP product, uh, the HP Elite Book 850 G1. There's just one little latch where you just kind of slide it over and uh, the whole bottom panel oops, uh, you know just slides off and you have access to the memory the hard drive the battery all of that kind of stuff and you don't even have to use a screwdriver to be able to get that out um, or, you know the back panel uh, the SSD is held in with screws so that's another HP product that actually has really good design and so that's a difference between the consumer class would be this HP Stream, the Pavilions, the Envies, uh, and even the Spectre laptops um, that are supposed to be high-end from HP um, are just really terrible from a maintenance um, upgradeability standpoint compared to HP's business offerings, such as their um, HP ProBook or HP EliteBook. Um, so I'm not just talking bad about HP. I can't really see the logo there, but yeah, just holding up the HP Stream laptop. It's not just that HP is makes bad laptops. That that would be an over a generalization, um, and it's not totally true. 
Um, some of their business class laptops are good to very good. Um, but you got to watch out for laptops that just don't allow you to do much. For example, this laptop, I believe it can't be upgraded past four gigabytes of memory, where uh, in HP EliteBook and most of the Pro Books for the last say, six, seven years or more could be upgraded to 16 gigabytes of memory, four times as much as this you know, new laptop. Um, and I'm, I'm a ThinkPad guy. I like Lenovo ThinkPads a lot. Most of the laptops that I use on a regular basis are Lenovo ThinkPads. Um, but, you know, certainly this is interesting comparing the difference between a newish HP Stream and HP's other business class offerings, which are a significantly better value long term because you can easily upgrade. So, that's just kind of the short of it. Um, I was, uh, I'm glad that I got Linux installed and that it works. Um, with GNOME 3, it's still pretty slow, um, but there's still plenty of uh, screen space. So um, I guess I'll view this image here. The screenshot that I've got, you know, it just shows that um, I uh, did a command to show the file systems and how much free space they have. And you can see that uh, 7.3 gigs is used and 20 gigs is free. So kind of on the Ubuntu default install with the GNOME 3 desktop environment, it's using 28% of the space um, and you know got about 70% uh, free. Um, so significantly better than Microsoft Windows, which brand new out of the box it's almost out of space and then when you try to do uh one of the kind of major feature updates to windows 10 um the laptop hp stream laptop just completely chokes and dies and can't do anything like when it runs out of space you can't do anything more you can't do print jobs you can't browse the web because there's no place to store the temp files for the the web browsing um you can't install any software you can't save any new files um, essentially, when a laptop runs out of space completely, it'll choke. Um, and so, but with Microsoft Windows, the that happens immediately or very, very soon uh, after you get this laptop open and try to start doing anything with it. So just a really interesting thing. I don't know why manufacturers sell laptops with Windows pre-installed that only have 32 gigs. They should have known this by now, and I think they do, but they're still selling new laptops with only 32 gigs with Windows pre-installed. And HP isn't the only culprit here. I've run into the Lenovo 100S laptops that had the same issue. So I'm not just talking bad about HP, just saying, hey, this is an issue. If you happen to get one of these laptops, um, the best thing to do is just erase Windows and then install Linux on it. And I certainly wouldn't buy this laptop new, and I don't recommend paying much for it used either. But if you happen to acquire one, um, it's at least usable after installing Linux on it. If I sell this laptop, I'll probably try to install Linux Mint that's based on Ubuntu. The installer will probably work on that. My guess is it'll work a little bit faster. And the interface of Linux Mint is uh, familiar to or reminiscent of some of the Windows um, so different, you know, here uh, you have kind of the dock on the side and, and uh, a very different visual interface uh, where Linux Mint has, you know, essentially a start menu and a start button on the bottom left hand corner and is more reminiscent, um, not an exact copy at all, but more reminiscent and familiar to people who um, are used to using Windows. So I'll probably install Linux Mint based on Ubuntu on this laptop if I do sell it to somebody. And sometimes that happens. Somebody will be like, I just need a cheap laptop. All I want to do is connect to the internet and check my email and do a few other things. Well, then this could be a good use case for that. And used with Linux on would be really affordable. Hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.